Chapter 5 Bob, she said bemusedly as she slowly tilted her head from side to side, feeling the sensation of her hair grazing one side of her face, then the other. What? Shinji asked after he finished chewing. It really doesn't seem at all strange to you? Kayla said as she slid the knife through her steak. It's a girl's haircut with a boy's name. Are you still hung up on that? It's just weird, Kayla said with a shrug. I suggested a pixie cut. I'm not a pixie either, Kayla teased. It wouldn't have worked anyway. I like all my stripes, including the one in my hair. If I got that haircut, I wouldn't be able to decide if I want to be silver on the right, left, or a little on each side. She moved her hair with her hand to illustrate as she spoke. I get it, Shinji said as he pushed around the last few scraps of food on his plate with his fork. It would have looked cute, he said with a faint sigh. Better than that thing on your head. You mean this? She taunted as she tapped around, red, gemstone which the beautician had stuck to her forehead where the stripes which were on each side of her forehead met. The lower curving slightly upward the upper curving slightly downward. The beautician thought my stripes made it look like a tiara, so she thought the gem would complete the look. It looks like an oversized bindi. It's a ruby carbuncle, she objected. I know, Shinji grumbled, but if some ash eeler mistakes you for a Sam Saran thrall don't be too surprised. Shinji, Kayla said as she laid her knife and fork on the table, Samsarans don't have tails or stripes. What if they don't notice them? Shinji asked. Samsarans are essentially a slave race, even if they don't see it that way. The Esh Eler exploited their ancient religious beliefs, and it sickens me, Kayla growled. An uprising is long overdue. If it doesn't happen soon, I may give the gears of change a shove. Count me out, Shinji said, nine foot, six armed, humanoids that are fully ambidextrous? That's not a species I'd want to start a fight with. Nobody asked you to, Kayla said angrily but the Esh Eler and the Lamentics are the only two remaining Elderos hybrid species, and their behavior reflects badly on their progenitors. And, that matters to you why, he thought to her. She glared across the table at him. What did the doctor say? No mental exertion for the next thirty hours, he grumbled in frustration. Toggles only, nothing that could be classified as active use. Last time I checked, telepathy wasn't a toggled ability. No, but empathy is and stop changing the topic. Is that your third? He smirked at her sardonically. No, really, is it? Mental shield, empathy, and truth detection, Shinji scoffed. It's my knowing when Lady Dark Seed is full of shit trifecta. So, are you going to answer my question? Nope. Kayla answered with a grin that was somewhere between playful and bratty. It was obvious his answer wasn't accurate. A well-trained telepath could feel lies without activating truth detection. If he didn't want to tell her, that was his business, but it struck her as strange that she hadn't felt any deception in his reply. Speaking of ears, how's your finger doing? It was just a knuckle. Kayla shrugged. It takes a little longer for Ko Tom's regeneration to mend bone, but I'd still rather do that my way. It should be fully recovered in about a half hour. Don't you think it's a bit hypocritical to insist I listen to a doctor that you ignored? Mystrionics can heal wounds of varying severity, Ko Tom's has regeneration, psionics has what? Mending, right? Kayla asked. He nodded. Your point? It's the least effective of the healing methods available to practitioners of the mystic arts. Technically lore's the best, but good luck finding a loresman. Kobe Tom's regeneration is the second best. How do you figure? Mystrionics is faster. Kobe Tom's regeneration is passive. Just toggle it on and it can even regrow limbs, if you give it enough time. The mystrionic techniques require a high level of finesse which I just don't possess. That's why we have specialists. 
That still doesn't explain why you didn't let them fix your finger. Medical science is great for dealing with diseases, infection, and general reconstruction, but it's pretty useless if your species isn't listed in their database. I can guarantee you I'm unlisted. It's just a knuckle, I'm sure they could, he began, I didn't want to take any chances, Kayla said sternly. Okay, it's your finger. If you're done arranging the remains of those vegetables into some coded message for the wait staff, Kayla teased, I'm ready to go. What? he asked with a hint of nervousness in his tone. I'm not judging, she giggled as she spoke. The waiter seemed sweet on you. I think they might have given you an extra large portion. The Galgesham? A little crocodile love, she teased. If that's what you're into, who am I to judge? Most species take offense to being called by names that refer to more primitive creatures with only a passing morphological resemblance, but the Galgesham had embraced the fearful respect that came with being referred to as crocodilian. They do take offense to being called gators, but that has more to do with an ancient Terran dish called gator tails than any actual comparison. I've been ready, Shinji said. Speaking of messages, what was written on that cylinder that woman shot at you? She wasn't the actual shooter, Kayla corrected, but she was clearly the messenger. She carefully withdrew it from its hiding place in her furry top and stood it on the table with her finger resting on the top. It looks like cuneiform, he remarked while leaning in for a closer look. If you say so, Kayla said as she slowly turned it. It's written in an ancient lamentic script. What does it say? I don't know, Kayla admitted, the language has changed too much. I'm going to have to get it translated. I recognize the characters, but the meanings of the words have changed drastically. No idea at all? She held it up in front of her face and rotated it slowly. Not unless she's asking me on a date, Kayla snickered. I'd like to think they'd have used a less aggressive approach, if that was what they were after. Have you heard from your contacts yet? I don't suppose that was from them. No, not a word, Kayla sighed. I'm still not sure what really happened earlier. I'm pretty sure that soul mage was behind it but I have no idea what sort of ability she was using. Shinji frowned darkly. So, what do we do now? Should we try to find them? Which them, she asked as she slid the cylinder back into its hiding place. Your contacts. Oh, Kayla said with a blush. I'm starting to question my approach. I knew that someone was tracking me. I'd assumed it was Gao Rune but I'm starting to wonder if it was just the lamentic I was sensing. I still feel like I'm being watched. Maybe it's her. It could be that Ilanjani from the starport. I don't think it's Gao Rune anymore, but I have no idea who it is. If I knew there was a target on my back, I wouldn't have asked you to accompany me. I'm honored that you did, she said sheepishly. I'm starting to think leaving my weapons on the shuttle was a bad move. She scowled. We should probably get them if you still intend to fight Corbijani. Fighting is the wrong word. I don't think I can defeat him in combat. I know what he's capable of. I have a plan, but if I don't take him down before he can counterattack I'm going to lose. I don't stand a chance in a protracted battle. His combat experience dwarfs mine, and I know it. How are you going to beat him? he asked with a hint of skepticism. A little guile, stacking the odds in my favor, and an extra finger on the scales. What do you mean by that? I'm going to cheat. Shinji raised an eyebrow at her. Kayla waved her arm past a scanner in the middle of the table, grumbled and then did it a second time. It chimed softly, acknowledging payment. She stood and started heading to the exit. She smiled as she heard his chair scrape across the floor as he rushed to catch up with her. She stopped abruptly, just before a narrow seam across the floor which divided the restaurant from the mall. Shinji walked up and took her hand but was halted as he attempted to continue forward. Her tail shot out in front of him, and her left hand held him fast. Her knuckle still ached slightly from the pressure she was exerting on his hand. What's wrong? 
he asked softly. Deja Viku. What? It's like deja vu, but more like a recollection than things just seeming familiar. It's probably nothing, he balked. My combat empathy has never led me astray, and right now it's screaming louder than it ever has before. Just wait here with me for a minute. Please. Kayla stood motionless as she studied the movements of the vast assortment of people walking through the mall, looking for patterns. You're just being paranoid. I don't think so, Kayla muttered as she watched a Rakushin sidestep to avoid walking too close to one of the central support columns, nearly dropping one of the packages it was carrying in the process. One of its furry, rat-like, heads turned to look toward the stone pillar in confusion, while its second head continued looking forward as if nothing had happened. It had to be the Ilanjani. Its ability mustn't have affected all of the aliens' brains. While not the only two-headed species, Rakushin physiology is peculiar. Each of their heads has an independent brain which are linked through a central neural plexus just above their tail. The structure acts like tertiary brain allowing them to survive the loss of both heads, which was an evolutionary necessity due to the hunting practices of the Ikes Vakro, a rather nasty insectal creature with a penchant for sucking the brains out of severed heads. They share their homeworld with another two-headed species known as Okeldi. They're the only two species which are able to regrow their heads, which might explain why their capital isn't popular with tourists. Their homeworld would be considered a paradise if it wasn't for the bug problem. Kayla narrowed her eye, adjusting her visual acuity. There was too much power flowing through the area for her augmented vision to be of much help. She continued watching people subconsciously avoiding the pillar as they passed by the unseen Ilanjani. What she really needed was a power outage or some way to filter her vision to only see what she wanted. If only she was able to manipulate the shadows like the changeling, Iron Nightmare, had. She silently scolded herself for not seeing it earlier. What are we waiting for? Shinji asked. When the top floor collapsed, how long did it burn? A few weeks, why? With the collapse of the upper floor there was no possible way they could have cleaned out all the soot. She didn't need a power failure or some mystical force to generate a little shade. Lady Dark Seed, Shinji grumbled softly, if you're convinced someone's after you, why are we just standing here? When you set a trap, Kayla said as she surveyed the crowd, you don't chase an animal away from the trip line or pull on the cord until they've stepped into the snare. It's the same here. They're waiting. Who? She squinted, allowing her eyelashes to diminish the light slightly as she focused her will and reached out to the natural forces around her. There's a mongani sitting diagonally to our left, about twenty feet from us, that's pretending to be reading a book. He obviously doesn't know the language it's written in. He's turning the pages in the wrong direction. Straight ahead and a little to the right, by the hat seller's booth, there's a Daenerik who's never taken their eyes off us while browsing. About ten yards to their right, there's a black Gorgalian shopping for daggers too small in relation to the size of their hands. There's a Kim Seti in front of a feed store on the right. It looks like they're resting, but the muscles in their wings and legs are tensed. There are also four identical robed Darians which look like holograms. One of them might be real. There are a couple others including a Shega and a Zaman who seem suspicious, but I'm not sure yet. Straight ahead, a touch to the left, there's an Okeldi wearing dark glasses on their false head, but that's not all. The Udbar sniper that fired that cylinder toward us earlier is standing next to a column on the next level. They're just standing there with their rifle, and don't seem to be concerned about being noticed. As if that's not enough to worry about, there are three Dareth one floor up on the left leaning against the railing who seem to just be people watching, and I'm pretty sure there's an Ilanjani by that column over there, Kayla motioned with the tip of her tail as she concluded her assessment. Kayla prepared to wall off her telepathic abilities as she had done when she'd fought Iron Nightmare on the ancient Eldoran homeworld. That many, Shinji whispered while trembling slightly. What should we do? Should I go back inside and contact security? The janitorial staff would be more helpful. No, really. 
Is there anything I can do? Sure, she chuckled softly. You keep the five on the left busy, while I take care of the five on the right. I think we may need a recount. Just go inside and stay out of sight. I can help, he quietly insisted through bared teeth. Don't dismiss me like that. I'm a top-rated Shadow Brigade psionicist. Just tell me what we're up against. Tell me what you need me to do. It's too dangerous, Kayla scolded. If they manage to get into your head and turn you against me. I can resist control abilities. Not this time, Kayla said adamantly, only passive abilities. You're not supposed to strain your brain. Doctor's orders, remember? There are too many of them, he objected. You need me. Kayla smirked as her tail slowly traced invisible patterns on the floor around her. I need you safe on the other side of that door, she said while motioning to the entrance to the restaurant. I can handle them, she growled. What about her? Kayla didn't even have to turn around to know the lamentic woman had returned. I guess it's true what they say, Kayla sighed. You can't play three-dimensional chess without a queen. Let me help, or at least let me call someone. If not security, just tell me who to call. You can't win a game of chess when you only have one piece on the board. She rested her hands against his chest and smiled weakly at the forlorn look in his eyes, please, leave this to me. Let me protect my king. Your king. Just get inside. Be safe, Shinji said with a quirky grin. I'll watch from just inside the door. If you. Now, Kayla said urgently, as she gave him a firm shove. Run. Shinji staggered backward, just barely catching himself before landing on the ground. He turned and rushed to the door as best he could. Once he was clear, her tails hurriedly completed the runic glyph they'd been invisibly tracing. Irviva's Eikemaku e Jaguvas, Kayla roared as she plummeted downward, her palms striking the ground on either side of her. Raw power flowed around her, in a spectrum only she could perceive scorching the ancient Johnny sigil into the tiled floor. As she whirled the air around herself, something felt. Wrong. She glanced down, momentarily, noting that a small cluster of symbols was absent from the ashen ring. Her mastery over the elemental forces had activated, but remained incomplete. The spherical whirlwind intensified around her, pulling soot-filled air, whistling through the narrow gap between the remains of the first and second floors. The mall quaked and groaned as the tangled metal supports within the wreckage quivered with the sudden increase in air pressure. The dense steel cores of the support pillars hummed as the vibration passed through them from far above. The leathery winged Msetti slammed into the floor as they attempted to take flight, pinned to the floor by the roaring winds. A vast torrent of ash flowed through the room, blotting out the light and blinding her enemies like a sandstorm in the blasted plains of Midgard. Kayla knew where they were, but only due to the muted energy signature of the mystic powers they wielded. As the dark cloud blinded the sniper, her combat empathy quieted. His bloodlust which had been compromising her ability to recognize more immediate threats. She suspected that he had no intention of actually firing. More likely, his purpose was to throw her combat instincts into chaos. Her mental shielding quivered as the enemy psionicists attempted to infiltrate her mind. While unable to see its source, she saw a faint wispy stream of blue energy passing toward the Mongani, who charged at her without a moment of hesitation. The Mongani were the descendants of the inhabitants of the first Ark ship used to evacuate the ancient Terran homeworld. The aliens overseeing the evacuation had been told by the local inhabitants that there were multiple human races. It was only after the first Ark ship, full of apes, chimpanzees, and bonobos was launched that they learned the human population wasn't talking about actual species but ethnic divisions within their population with only about one-tenth of a percent genetic difference between them. Kayla's tornadic field shredded the Mongani's clothing and flung the beast behind her. The faint red glow around its body was a clear indication it had a knack for Kobe Tonge, 
and the sound of it slamming into a wall behind her demonstrated that it lacked the foresight to activate any of its abilities before blindly rushing into combat. Thanks to intervention from the Caymans, the Mongani were the first species from Earth to return to the stars. Unfortunately, the technological boost they received from their neighbors didn't do much to speed up their intellectual development. The sound of gunshots rang out, breaking her from the distraction. One of their psionicists must have made it through her mental defenses, pulling her attention away from the moment. The psionic holographic duplicates of the Darian blinked out of existence as she finished walling off her mind to prevent herself from being further influenced by the enemy telepaths. The projectiles whipped around her, carried by the whirlwind, as she sprinted to the pillar where the Ilanjani had concealed itself. Her combat empathy warned her an instant too late as a heavy impact against her inner. Right thigh disrupted her forward momentum. She felt the Talgardon scales rippling around her leg as they dispersed the impact of the high-power shell. The projectile had been unable to penetrate her armor, but it had knocked her off course, causing her control of the winds to falter, along with her footing. The force of the wind shredded the Kimseti's right wing and stripped away the outermost layers of the Ilanjani's flesh. Their ability to conceal their presence was apparently skin deep. A light on the column burst as she channeled the electricity in through her left hand and out through her right. The Ilanjani wailed in pain as lightning arced through their body, and reached out beyond them seeking new targets. She felt the bolt fork twice striking both the amphibious Shea and the squid-faced Daenerik. Kayla winced as she regained her footing. Her leg ached from the impact, but the pain paled in comparison to what Kivaz had been forced to endure during her training on Midgard. Either the sniper had shot blindly and scored a good hit, or he'd fired with the intention of maiming. She suspected the latter was the case. With her mind sealed off, Kayla couldn't access her telepathic abilities, which included telekinesis. If the missing symbols of the rune her tails had traced could be trusted, fire, ice, heat and cold wouldn't respond to her will either. Half of your people are incapacitated, Kayla called loudly through the ashen darkness. If you value their lives, give the order and I'll allow them to withdraw without further loss of life. The sound of her voice echoed through the room, allowing her to pinpoint their locations. She had no expectation that they'd consider her offer. P.R. I didn't have a history of valuing sentient life, regardless of what their brochures claimed. One of her brown tails constricted around the Kimseti's neck, as the other withdrew a dagger from their belt. If you're unwilling to, the Okeldi began to say, as the knife whistled past him and embedded itself in the Darian's throat. She heard the faint crunching sound of the Kimseti's neck snapping between the desperate gurgling sounds of the telepath's final breaths. Mercy is not weakness. Kayla chuckled mirthlessly as the ash began to settle. The Okeldi pointed at her and yelled, Kill her. I'm not with them, the Gorgalian said as he held up his hands in front of himself. She suspected he was lying, but at least that left her with one less opponent. The Mongani was back on his feet, having shaken off the impact of being hurled into the wall. She could hear the Shega and Daenerik stirring somewhere behind her. After a jolt like that I doubt your muscles are responding properly, Kayla commented. You may want to sit this one out. After a particularly violent protest, which resulted in the death of a member of the ambassadorial team, the remainder of the evacuation of the Terran homeworld was handed over to the Lamentic representative's cruel, emotionless, administrative oversight. She struggled against the new distraction. She'd walled off her mind from mental intrusion, so it had to be something else. She spun around to look at the Shea and Daenerik, but they were scampering away. It's you, isn't it? Kayla said without turning around. Is this some new mystrionic ability you developed on your own, or some strange gift? I can't be reached with mental abilities right now, and Kobe Tomj doesn't work like this. She heard the faint raspy sound of the sniper chambering another round. She stepped to the side swiftly as her tails swept the charging Mongani's legs out from under him. He collided with the pillar as he crashed to the ground. If you get a second chance at this, Kayla scoffed as she turned to face the Okeldi, bring a tank. She frowned darkly realizing her words had been wasted. 
he wasn't there. Just one, a soft voice said somewhere to her right. Her tails whirled around her as she spun to face the speaker. The white-haired woman deflected Kayla's brown tails as the stinger of her black tail glanced off of an invisible barrier just in front of their face. Calm down, the woman chided, you passed. What? Kayla asked incredulously. They were trying to kill me. The woman smiled broadly, but her eyes remained cold and emotionless as she replied, No, they were trying to control you, which is much worse. What I'd want from you is very different. Kayla took a half-step backward away from the pale-skinned, white-haired, woman. The two women stood in silence for a moment, before Kayla asked, You're a lamentic, aren't you? What's your name? How'd you guess? The pale woman teased. It must be the hair that gave me away, or maybe it's my alabaster skin. I would have gone with translucent, Kayla snickered, but suit yourself. You went a little heavy on the blush, but I suppose with your complexion you'd be nearly featureless on camera. Careful, Kivaza cautioned from deep within her mind, she's as powerful as she is beautiful. They began circling around one another as the pale woman spoke, let's not be catty. I was about to compliment your stripes. Do they go all the way down? Kayla hesitated for a moment, wondering if the statement was intended to be innuendo or. The other woman lunged forward, grabbing her tightly around the waist with her right arm, as she pinned Kayla's tails to the floor with an unseen field of kinetic force. Reflexively, Kayla grabbed the woman's left arm as her closed hand sped toward the underside of Kayla's jaw. I think you forgot to draw your knife, Kayla snickered as they stood together, locked in an awkward embrace. I didn't forget a thing, the woman cooed. If I had grabbed my blade, you'd be dead now and that would be far less interesting. Either way, I have you just where I want. It will take more than that to kill me, Kayla scoffed. Instead of struggling or attempting to attack her, the woman leaned forward, kissed Kayla lightly on the lips then released her grip and leapt back with a quirky smile on her face. There was a strange indefinable quality to the woman's touch, which was accentuated by the kiss. Somehow she felt as if that kiss was meant to reach her second soul. Had the woman somehow sensed Kivaza's warning? Just what did I pass, and who in the powers are you? Both of Lady Dark Seed's souls asked as one. Are you ready to talk now that your bloodlust seems to have abetted? The woman asked. Kayla glanced toward the restaurant door where Shinji was waiting for her. Privately, the woman said insistently. Tell me your name, Kayla demanded. Cyanide, the pale woman replied. A lamentic named Cyanide, Kayla taunted. Excuse me if I'm a bit skeptical. Let me guess you're going to claim to be a descendant of Hemlock. Is your entire family toxic? Do you have a brother named Venom? Of course not, the woman snapped, and I'm not named after the poison. It's cyanide not cyanide. It's from Elderani, not some dead Terran language. Dwindling starlight, Kayla mused. The woman's demeanor changed momentarily as she asked, Where did you learn Elderani? Kayla momentarily considered charging cyanide while her guard was lowered, but decided instead to hear her out. What do you want? Corin. Why? Do you have it? No. I asked you why you want the leech. Don't lie to me. One of our seers predicted you'd return here with the leech containing the soul of Corin. Your seer is wrong. I don't have it. Kayla said as she lowered her mental defenses. Feel free to peek in my head if you need to. I don't have the leech. The woman's eyes narrowed momentarily. You're telling the truth, but that can't be the case. Aisha's almost never wrong. Almost never, is not a great measure of infallibility, Kayla said with a smirk. Fair enough, Cyanide sighed. I need to find a damnable leech tell me why. I'm under orders from the Lamentic High Court. I can't share that information. Kayla crossed her arms. Her tails moved restlessly behind her as Kayla said, tell me what you plan to do if you find Corin. 
If I like your reason, I might help you. It seems we're out of time, Cyanide said irritably. We'll have to finish this discussion later. Wow, that's a lot of bodies, Shinji muttered as he drew up next to Kayla. Before I go, Cyanide asked with a mischievous grin, will you answer my question? Kayla could feel Shinji's confusion and curiosity as she asked the woman, what question? Do your stripes go all the way down? A mental image of her standing naked in the decon stall flashed through Shinji's mind. Before Kayla could respond, Cyan grinned broadly and said, apparently, they do. Shinji. Kayla snapped. Do you plan to show every telepath we come across what I look like naked? I didn't realize she's a. She's a lamentic, Kayla growled. Soul mages can access any of the mystic arts. I'm sorry, Shinji stammered. I didn't think. No, you did think, and that's the problem. Where did she go? Shinji asked. I didn't even see her leave. Speaking of leaving, let's go before the cleanup crew gets here. While I expect my contact to find me, eventually, I'd rather have it on my terms, at a location of my choosing. Not here, standing on a pile of corpses. It's an impressive mental image. Shinji chuckled softly. I could start piling up the corpses if you'd like. I think you should avoid mental images, Kayla smirked, then added, I've decided where I want to meet them, but I really should get cleaned up first. If you don't have a room reserved on planet yet, I could bring you by the barracks. Are you hoping to join me in the shower? She teased. It's a communal shower, Shinji said dismissively. That's no good, Kayla pouted. I'll watch the door while you're in there. I can make sure nobody barges in on you. People do it all the time when someone brings a guest back to the barracks. His expression changed as he finished speaking. Yes, Shinji, Kayla said exasperated, I was hoping you would join me. You're cute when you're being dense, but this is getting ridiculous. You do understand this isn't just some silly little game, don't you? I would never presume. Shinji began to say but fell silent as Kayla finished speaking. I want to fuck you, Kayla said forcefully. The showers are communal, but I do have my own room, Shinji said urgently. Never mind, Kayla sighed, I was hoping for spontaneity, not some clandestine plot. Let's go so I can at least get that shower. Yes, Lady Darkseed, Shinji said sheepishly.